This is the project we're going to do today. I'm calling this Seaside Cove and it's using quite a few of the new 2019 series of stamps by Stampscapes. And these are the different stamps that were used in this system, uh, in this project. This is from the Stampscapes Nature Sheet 1 and we just used this portion of the stamp to finish off the, this part here. We also used the curvy walkway, which is number 414F. We used the small sailboat, which is from the Nature Set 17. We used this foreground grass, which was from the Nature Set 9. We also used the dog walk, number 227A. We used these little trees from the Nature Set 15. The coyote, number 402A. The shore left, 410E. The shore with cabin, small, number 413D. This rock that the lady is sitting on is from the Nature Set 2, and the lady sitting is 433B. The little uh, canoeist is from the Nature Set 9. The water ripples are from Nature Sheet 8, and uh, the ground that was used in the foreground is number 412E, the shore near. Here are the different inks that were used and the Copic markers. I'll also have them listed in the description of the video. And I also used a few Tombow dual brush markers. Oh, and for the stamps, I also forgot these. These were art impression stamps. Uh, these two flowers from the mini flower set 5009 and the small grass from the foliage set 5051. Okay, I've done a, a quick rough draft just on regular typing paper just to get a layout of how I would like everything to stamp. And now I'm going to do the stamping on chrome coat paper. I got a shorter, a quarter sheet of chrome coat paper here. I'm going to put some temporary adhesive. This is just a scrapbook adhesives to hold it in place as I'm working with it. And I will start by stamping the little building, which is uh, right here. This is stamp 413D. This is one of the new Stampscapes releases. And I'm going to use my large stamp positioner for this. And I will start by stamping on the acrylic plate. I'll re-ink this up. And I will position this so that it's roughly in the same position that it was in my test stamping here. And so that'll be about maybe right here. And then I will stamp it again. Okay, next I'm going to stamp this portion here. This is from the Nature Set number one. And I'm only going to need this half of the stamp. And I'm going to use my stamp chamois and I'm just going to remove the ink from this little bit of grass right here. 
And then I'm going to position this so that the bottom part of here lines up with the bottom to make it a little island. Okay, now I'll use my little stamp positioner. And I'm going to want to stamp the little boat in front of the pier. Okay, and I'm going to use my stamp chamois again. And I am going to remove the water from the bottom here. Okay, next I'm going to stamp the big pathway. And then I will place this so that the stripes are parallel with the bottom and it is even with the edge of the dock. Okay, and that pier was uh, part number 414F, that was the stamp number. And the little canoeist was from the Stampscapes Nature Set 9. Now I'm going to put a little mask here. And I want to stamp this little land right here. And this is using the new stamp 412E. And I'm going to stamp it so that this little hump is about on this uh, second or third. So I'm going to stamp it so it's about like this. I'm going to use the straight portion here. Okay, next I'm going to stamp the rock that the lady is sitting on. This is the rock that's from the nature set number two. And I am going to use my st small positioner for that. Next, I'm going to stamp in the girl. She's uh, stamp number 433B. Okay, now I'm going to use my positioner again so that I can stamp this shoreline over here, which is stamp number 410E. Okay, next I'll use my small positioner and we'll do the little dog walker. Okay, next we're going to stamp the wolf, which is stamp number 402A. Once again, I'm going to use my positioner. Okay, and I'm going to want to have the horizon maybe about uh, a little more than a quarter of an inch from the top of the piece. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my little boat and I'm going to use my positioner for this one too. And the little sailboat, the small sailboat is from the new nature seat, sheet number 17. Oh and incidentally I've used Memento Tuxedo Black in stamping all of this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I've uh, prepared some masks for everything. Okay, next I'm going to stamp in the water ripples and this is from the Nature Sheet 8. And so I will ink it up. And I will soften the edges by just wiping off at the edges with my stamp chamois. And now I will remove all the masks. 
Okay, I noticed I smudged it a little bit right here, so I'm just going to use my memento marker to kind of uh, complete that little portion there and also to connect this. Okay, now I'm going to start coloring the piece. But first I want to add a sun behind the sailboat. And so I'm going to use one of my hole punches. It's the one that's the biggest hole. And I just punched a couple of masks using the biggest hole punch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay them so they overlap a bit. Let's see. Like that. Let's see. And actually, I think I will put a little bit of adhesive on that so that it sticks. So I will overlap it a bit. I'm going to do this guy first, so I'm going to use a post-it labeling tape. And the colors I'm going to use for the sky, provided I can get them all in, I'm going to use some Distress ink. I'm going to use, start with the antique linen close to the horizon, followed by seedless preserves, then Victorian velvet, then chipped sapphire. And what I'm going to use to add the color is I have these cheap blending brushes that I got from Amazon. They cost about $16 for the entire set. The one I'm going to use is this size. There are two brushes that are this size, and one of them has a flat top, and one of them has kind of a rounded top. I'm going to use the one with the flat top. And I will start with the antique linen. To change color, I'm just going to wipe the brush off on a dry microfiber cloth. And then I'll do the seedless preserves. Next, I'll do Victorian Velvet. And at the very top, I'll do Chipped Sapphire. Okay, and now I'm going to blend back the other way, going from Victorian Velvet, Seedless Preserves, and then finally Antique Linen. Okay, I'm going to give this top just a little bit of a chance to dry. Maybe even use my heat gun to help dry it a bit. Okay, now I'm going to put this on the sky side, this mask, and I'm going to have a little bit of the sky showing because I want to make sure that I don't have a white line when I finish with the bottom part. I'm also going to put some of my other masks back on. Okay, for the water, up near the horizon, we're going to start with Victorian Velvet. And then we're going to progress downward with Tumbled Glass, Salty Ocean, and Chipped Sapphire. So we'll start with the Victorian Velvet. Okay, next we'll do the Tumbled Glass. For 
the water down here, I think I'm going to change to this fourth largest size brush so that I can get a little bit better coverage. So the next I'm going to do is Salty Ocean. Okay, and at the very bottom, we're going to do Chipped Sapphire. Okay, and now I'm going to blend back up. And so next we'll do the Salty Ocean. Okay, for the land, I'm going to use Distress Ink again, Tea Dye, Twisted Citron, and Mowed Lawn. And I'll start with a little bit of Tea Dye. For the, for the Tea Dye, I'm going mostly like where the rocks are. I'm going to change to the brush with the rounded tip, still doing the mowed lawn. Okay, to get the little bit of water over here that I missed, I'm going to use tumbled glass and salty ocean. Okay, for the rock the girl is sitting on, I am going to use some tea dye. For the walkway, I'm going to use brushed corduroy and walnut stain. And I'm going to use my flat brush this time. Okay, I'm going to use my rounded brush for the walnut stain. Okay, I'm also going to use a little bit of the brush corduroy and my round makeup brush. Okay, I'm going to use a Copic marker to color in the rocks here. I'm going to use E99. To color in the cabin, I'm going to use Copic markers E95, E97, and E99. Okay, for the deck and trim of the cabin, I'm going to use E21, E25, and E29. And for the lady skin, I'm going to use E21. Okay, for the lady's dress, I'm going to use Copic markers Y21, Y23, and Y26.
Okay, for the cabin's windows, I'll use Y21. Okay, for the roof of the cabin, I'm going to use Copic markers W2, W4, and W6. Okay, for the sails of the sailboat, I'm going to use C1 and C2. And I'll also add some Y21 to the sails. Okay, for the little sailboat, I'm going to color it in with some B04. Okay, for the lady's hair, I'm going to do some N6 and N0. Okay, with all the coloring, I've lost the definition of the coyote, and I'm going to try and get it back. So I'm going to roughly place the coyote where I think about where it's going to be. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this on a piece of plastic. Okay, I got a longer, narrower piece of plastic. And so I'm going to now stamp this on the plastic. I'm going to make sure the plastic is in the corner. And then I'll stamp the coyote on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the piece underneath so that it matches as well as I can with what's been stamped on the plastic. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Then I'll remove the plastic and I will ink it up again. And so you can see it did a pretty good job at matching up the coyote. And I'm going to give this a chance to dry. And then we'll be back. Okay, I'm going to use a Copic marker C4. And I'm going to add some shadows under where the lady is sitting. And I'm also going to add some C6. Okay, for the water under the dock, I'm going to use some B93. Now I need to add a little bit more color to the sails of the sailboat, so I'm going to use some YRO2. Okay, and there's two little notches coming out of the sun that I don't like, so I've picked a Copic marker that is kind of hopefully the same color. V25. Okay, and I'm going to use some YG67 to maybe add a little bit more color into these little gully areas here. And I'm going to use the same color here for the pine trees. And I'll use some E25 to add some color to the trunks. And I also want to add a little orange highlight to the lady's dress, so I'm going to use the YR02 again. Okay, I'm going to add some trees over onto that side, so I'm going to use this little set of trees from the Nature Set number 15. Okay, I'm going to use my Copic marker YG67 again for the trees. And I'll use the E25 again for the trunks. Okay, now to add some texture to the ground area, I'm going to use my Art Impressions small grass set. And I'm going to use a Tombow marker. This is a dual brush marker, 
This is a water-based marker. It's number 249. And I'm just going to ink up the stamp. And then I am going to walk it. Okay, to add some wildflowers, I'm going to use an Art Impressions, uh, some stamps from the mini flower set 5009. And I'm going to start with this one with just the little dots. And I'm going to use a Tombow marker, number 755. Okay, next I'll use this little flower bunch. It's also from the mini flower set. And this time I'm going to use a purple color, Tombow marker, number 636. And I will just ink up the flower portion. Okay, I'm going to use a white gel pen. This one is the Uniball UM153. And I'm going to use a finer tip. That one's a little bit too thick for my liking. And so I'm going to use the Uniball, number UM120AC.1. And I'm also going to use some Hero Arts White Unicorn White Pigment Ink. And to apply it, I'm going to use a Fantastics brush tip applicator, which I have cut down so that it's a wedge. And I'll use my 0.03 multi-liner to see if I can also add a little bit more definition to this rock. And I think I put too much pigment ink on this rock, and so I'm going to just uh, tone it down a bit here. Okay, to add some highlights to the boardwalk, I'm just going to add some white dots. Okay, and then uh, as a final part, I want to add something to the foreground here. So I'm going to add this grass that's from the Nature Set 9. And I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black again. And I I need to add something to bring out the wolf a little bit more. So I'm going to use some more of the Hero Arts uh, Unicorn White to just kind of bring out the water right behind. Okay, now I'm going to give this a chance to dry a bit and then uh, I will spray it with uh, an acrylic coating to protect it. And uh, when we're finished, I will bring it back and show you the final product. Okay, before I spray it, I want to sign and date it. Okay, and here is the finished product after I finished spraying it with the acrylic coating. And I hope you enjoyed the project. Bye!